Hi, I'm Trey Warren, and this is a quick introduction video of how to set up a Buretrol IV system for pediatric cases. This is your standard Buretrol IV. You're going to identify some key components here. Your spike for the IV bag. This is the on-off clamp right here. You have an airway lever right there. You'll open that. Uh, we'll instruct on that later. This is your burette drip chamber, your standard drip chamber here. You also have another roller clamp below this burette chamber. That's going to be your regulating clamp. You have a few slide clamps on the IV system. Some lure lock uh, IV connect needleless ports. You also have needle ports that are closer to the patient. What you're going to want to do when you first go to set up this system, you want to make sure your airway lever is closed. You want to close the on-off lever, close the regulating uh, roller clamp there. For this video, we're using a standard 500 cc bag. You, uh, you can just choose any fluid that you desire based on the case that you're doing and the patient needs. Um, if it's a long case, you may actually need a liter bag, but for most cases, a 500 will uh, suffice for what you need. You're going to take the spike, insert it into the bag, just like this. You're going to open the airway lever. You want to make sure all these clamps are closed, which we already did. You're going to want to open this, fill it up with 35 mils of fluid. So there will be a little floating ring in the burette chamber. You want the top of that ring to the level of the uh, marking that you want as far as fluid. So you want to see the top, that top of that ring at the 35 mark. We're going to close that on-off lever. We still have the uh, airway lever open. You're going to have to shake it as you can see here. It doesn't want to float. There we go. So now you have the little uh, measurement. We're going to hang that up there just like that. You want to squeeze the drip chamber until it's about two-thirds full. Once that drip chamber is filled, we're going to go ahead with the airway lever still open. You're going to start opening this regulating valve to where it'll start filling the line. You want to ensure that there's no air because as we all know, air in a pediatric patient can be detrimental. So we want to make sure all air bubbles are free from this entire system before we connect it to any patient. Um, you also would like to have an air filter in the line as close to the patient as possible, but for this video and the variety of air filters out there, we're not going to uh, show that in this video, but you do want to ensure that you're using whatever air filter is available in your facility to ensure that the patient uh, gets no air to the IV system. You also would like to have a pediatric pigtail at the end of this on the other side of that air uh, filter to hook to the patient once you get the IV started. So, as you can see, it takes a few minutes just because this is a mini drip chamber, but it's almost filled now. And it's getting close to being filled, so we're going to get ready with our regulating clamp. We'll clamp that off. All right, so now with the regulating clamp, clamp, we check each uh, needle port and lower lock adapter. There is some air in there, um, but for the sake of this video, we're not going to draw out each one. But you'll want to connect a syringe and ensure that each uh, port is free of any air. At this point, you'll do your fluid calculations for your patient, get your hourly fluid volume, and we'll uh, set up here. We'll just assume that a patient needs 100 an hour. So we'll close that air lever back off. We're going to open this on off valve. We're going to squeeze the burette chamber until we get to that 100 mark. All right. And now we're at the 100 mark. We're going to flip that air lever back open raise it back up up there and hang it. Now we're ready. We can use this regulating valve to administer fluid to the patient with an assurance that they're not going to get more than 100 in an hour uh, in the event that you forgot to turn the, valve, the uh, regulating valve off or anything like that. The patient will not receive a huge bolus of the whole bag of fluid. And in case you didn't notice, there's also a port up here on the top of the burette chamber. That's where you can inject medicine into the burette chamber to give over a longer infusion time rather than just giving the patient a bolus. Things you want to be careful of, um, as we spoke before numerous times, no air in the system. You also uh, don't want to puncture any of the uh, 
mechanisms in this system to vent any air with the exception of the needle ports, but you don't want to be puncturing into the burette chamber, the drip chamber, anything soft areas, because that does uh, run the risk of entraining air into the system. You don't want, if you're using this as a system with a pressure uh, system to deliver blood products or anything like that, you do not want to ensure, uh, count on this system to prevent air because it will get air into it. Um, you should swab all needle injector ports thoroughly with alcohol swab before injecting any medicines you want to use. Um, if you're using those needle ports, you want to use small gauge needles, something like a 25 gauge to big as probably a 20 gauge uh, just to prevent any air from getting in there. Other than that, I think that's about it, and I thank you all for listening.